guys and gals, this video once again is pregnancy related. I'm sorry if you're really annoyed <laughs> with the pregnancy content. Um, I do have some non-pregnancy related video ideas, so if you want to see them rather sooner than later, then let me know in the comments. But this video is a very serious one and one I <clears throat> feel like is important. Um, I feel like it's important for myself to do document and it might be useful for someone else. And as you can gather from the title, this video is about the coronavirus or the COVID-19 pandemic and everything related to coronavirus stuff and the pandemic during pregnancy. The coronavirus didn't stop people from getting pregnant or like didn't end already existing pregnancies and it came suddenly and had and still has um, a huge impact on pregnant women and pregnancies and labor and even like babies and baby care so I just wanted to give uh, an overall like review um, what's going on in Estonia uh, related to the pandemic and then give give you a bit of like my own thoughts and experience with that <clears throat> so I know that the situation is different in pretty much every country in Estonia the situation has been quite mild but still has had some awful decisions being made in relation to pregnancies and giving birth so wow what an intro um very negative <laughs> So in the first section of this video, I'm just going to give you uh, a little overview of the situation in Estonia and I'll try not to give too many of my own opinions about it, just pure facts as much as I can. I'm still an emotional pregnant woman. Uh, and then the second part, I'm just going to, I think, just going to be just a little rant about, about the situation. And how I feel about it and how it has affected me. So, the first part. Um, okay, the coronavirus made its way into Estonia in the most stupid, weird, random way. So pretty much, um, I don't know, I don't remember if they've done anything about the virus yet or they were just like like the health administration or the health organization was uh, pretty skeptic about about this virus and was like that that was in the beginning of March. So the health organization was pretty skeptical, and the spokesperson said that oh it's it's nothing it's gonna go away soon it's not gonna make its way into Estonia but it did in the funniest fucking way. Um, Basically, they they allowed a volleyball team from northern Italy, which was like a center of pandemic at that time already. Like they allowed a full volleyball team to come and play uh, on an island called Sarema. Maybe you've seen that BBC documentary or like BBC piece about Sarama, like the pandemic uh, island of Estonia um, and that's why <laughs> yeah so there was a volleyball game and obviously people went and saw it like they were cheering on and so a lot of people were infected on one place it was now like the ground zero of this coronavirus in Estonia. Of course, uh, quite a lot of infected people came to Estonia from travels. Okay, so leaving that aside, how it came to Estonia, funny story. Yeah, okay. Uh, 
Now, uh, the Prime Minister uh, declared uh, the emergency situation since 13th of March. It's been almost two months of this emergency situation. And it meant that we were on a mild lockdown. No one was really, no one, no one really had to stay at home. Like we weren't like boarded in uh, and we, like the police didn't really beat anyone if they were on the street. But the mild lockdown funnily happened quite like naturally and the quarantine uh, because all of the shopping malls and spas, nightclubs, pubs, restaurants, everything, everything people could go, including schools, were closed. Now imagine how many retail workers lost their, or not lost their jobs, were, were sent on, I think, unpaid vacation and and yeah, what can you really do when you can't go anywhere, not even shopping? Like, no shopping, no malls, no spas, swimming, gyms, schools, everything. Everything was closed. So people had to stay at home. <laughs> and of course, uh, we have this 2 plus 2 rule that I think a lot of people, including myself, are really sick of hearing. Like. Two people, like you, when you go out, go somewhere, it's two people at a time and you should keep two meter distance with everyone. So two plus two rule. Um, I think it's funny that they had to like make this kind of rule because us Estonians, we keep that distance with everyone anyway. Now how that all relates to pregnancy, I've been rambling on. <clears throat> Not only were schools and malls and everything like fun closed, all planned treatments in hospitals were stopped because they were preparing for a lot of COVID-19 patients. Now imagine you've been waiting for your operation, like I know something with your tonsils or sinuses, whatever. You've been waiting for a minor but necessary operation for a while, maybe even a year, and now it's cancelled. Um, of course, the treatments that were a matter of life and death were continued because, you know, hospitals are supposed to save people. And this, this special emergency rules made its way into birding hospitals. Uh, for example, they stopped doing the first trimester and third trimester ultrasounds. Now, the third trimester ultrasounds, for most people, it's, it's just a fun way to see your baby one last time before it's born. And maybe see its position. But overall, it's not like a necessary thing for most people. But for some people, it's a necessary one because uh, they've had like c-section and maybe they and they need to get checked if they can give birth, birth vaginally or have to go through a c-section again especially if it's been like less than two years and they also stopped doing first trimester Oscar screenings which meant that if your baby was somehow not okay, like cr chromosomically not okay, you had to either pay for a nip test or wait for the 20 week ultrasound. Now, they did actually start financing the nip tests um, a bit later, but the first ones for the first few weeks had, had to be for them themselves, and it's expensive. It's, 250 euros and not everyone has that money um, also the weird thing is that not all hospitals were like under the same guidelines or following the same rules um, in some hospitals 
especially the bigger ones in the in the ca capital where I live, uh, the rules were definitely more strict. And the smaller hospitals kind of almost went on with normal <laughs> procedures. But some hospitals didn't do and I think still don't do the glucose tolerance test, which for some people is a matter of life and death. You can't really like get an accurate glucose tolerance like test result from just your morning blood but that's what they have to do now uh, or just monitor themselves with a glucose monitoring kit but I was that that's not like quite accurate either uh, and the thing that irks the most people and has affected people the most emotionally most hospitals most birthing hospitals or like actually I think now all of the birthing hospitals in Estonia don't allow birthing partners and it's just insane like people, women were getting ready with their partners, with their boyfriends, their husbands to have this beautiful birthing experience and now all of a sudden they had to go and still have to go and do it alone. Meanwhile, I don't think any other country has denied birthing partners, they just limited the partners to one because I think in most bigger countries you can take how many people you want to come with you and give birth. In Estonia I think the maximum is two anyways but most people just take their partner or their mom or whoever gives them support and helps them and that is a really traumatic thing and I personally, personally know and I personally know someone who was really, really distraught and, and I even <laughs> cried quite a lot when I thought about it in the beginning. So just imagine you're like days away from your due date and you've been preparing with your partner for months and months. You've been taking like birding classes and teaching them like the breathing techniques and everything and now you have to go and be alone and yeah everyone like hospitals and and the government says that oh you're gonna have midwives with you all the time no you fucking won't because there's like one midwife to like three pregnant women in the hospital giving birth anyways i and for a while uh, the pregnancy classes and like birding classes, all of those stopped and now they're just uh, online. Which is great that they are online. Mm. And it's it's something, but for like over a month we didn't even have that. Um, so next thing, every pregnant woman who goes to the birding hospital or birthing part of the hospital, because we don't have like birthing centers in Estonia I think like like I think America and maybe even England or like some countries have like those birthing centers where everything is so nice and gentle and zen relaxed not in Estonia it's still a hospital so anyways uh, when you go to give birth or even just to see, see your doctor um, you have to wear a mask which for a pregnant woman who already has some difficulty breathing because her lungs are like squashed together and pushed way up is a fucking nightmare. I had to wear that mask for my midwife appointment and I swore to myself and everyone I will never fucking wear it again. It was torture. It was actual torture. 
That's like being fucking waterboarded. And talking about doctor's appointments, um, a lot of like live doctor's appointments are now like phone phone calls. So your midwife or your doctor will just call you, ask you how you are, how much do you weigh, and if you have any way to check your blood pressure, you do that. And they just try to minimize contact. That's also the reason they gave for not allowing birthing partners to minimize contact. I think there's other other ways of like trying to keep the doctors safe than traumatizing thousands of women. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, so, when a woman goes to give birth, uh, she has to go in alone, she has to wear a mask, and she will be tested for COVID-19. She will have to wait for the results, wearing a mask. If the result is negative, she can give birth without wearing the mask. If the result is positive, she will have to wear the mask giving birth. I cannot imagine how that is even possible. Breathing is so fucking important during labor. It's a natural pain reliever and you just cannot breathe the way you're supposed to giving birth when you have to wear a fucking mask. Like even doctors and, and people who have to wear these masks frequently say that they're really hard to breathe in. Now imagine trying to give birth and wear a fucking mask. This topic is making me very, very, very angry and emotional. I'm just trying to pull myself back a bit. Um, so, the, okay, you go to the hospital to give birth, they test you. Now, if you're lucky, the test results come back in a few hours. Um, if you go there, like, early morning. If you go there during night or, like, after lunchtime, I think, then you have to wait until the next early morning when they take those tests to the lab and send the result, results back. Um... It's all very traumatizing and one of my friends gave birth last week. I'm so very proud of her and and everything was well with her. She had a private a private midwife who was with her at all times and helped her. But private midwives are fucking expensive. 500 freaking euros. <laughs> and she said that uh, when she got to the hospital, uh, there was this doctor waiting for her in a full hazmat suit, like a freaky, creepy, yellow hazmat suit. And that person or doctor would check you for dilation and like pre in preparation for giving birth. Imagine, you're already quite panicked. Because, you know, you're giving birth, maybe it's your first and you're, like, freaked out. And you have to go to the hospital alone, you, you know you're gonna have to do it all alone. You don't know how lucky you're gonna get with the midwife who's gonna be there when you give birth. Because sometimes midwives are fucking mean, or so I heard. And you get to the hospital and there's someone in a freaking hazmat suit who's come to check you. That's not a very nice environment to give birth. Like, can't really imagine trying to stay calm and open my body and breathe oxygen to my baby calmly when I see a freaking doctor in a yellow hazmat suit 
first thing when I get to the hospital. It's so insane. And I'm I'm telling you all this uh, on May 7th. It's almost two months of this emergency situation. Um, there have been, I think, 56 confirmed de deaths from COVID-19 in Estonia. All of them have been elderly. Most of them were in a hospice and were like over 80, 90. And most of them were in Sarema, you know, because the volleyball thing. And somehow we're still traumatizing women giving birth. There's 1720 uh, confirmed cases, which means positive tests. That doesn't mean that there are 1700 sick people. That just means quite a lot of them were tested, tested positive, but they don't have any symptoms. And maybe they even like were quarantined at home. There's been uh, news about one woman who was COVID-19 positive and gave birth, the baby was fine. And that was like in the beginning of this whole pandemic thing. So almost two months later, we're, we're slowly coming out of the emergency situation. Uh, I think next week they're gonna open malls, they're gonna open churches. Um, they're gonna open pubs and restaurants, but they're still not gonna allow birthing partners. They're still gonna make women giving birth and pregnant women going to birthing hospitals for checkups or something to wear a mask. They're still not gonna do first trimester or third trimester screening or like ultrasounds. Um, in hospitals. Private hospitals have started doing the third trimester screening again, but you can't give birth in those private hospitals anymore. Um, and I just, this whole situation is so, so devastating, so, so depressing. Like, the experts, experts say that this thing is almost over in Estonia and we have like maybe, like we had seven new confirmed cases or like positive tests uh, in the last 24 hours and I think over 1500 tests were made so that was like 0.4% of the tests were positive and the government is opening up all those other things but still traumatizing <laughs> pregnant women ah okay so that was a long first part and it wasn't as <laughs> like purely factual as i wanted it to be it got very emotional now for the second part i know this video has been quite long already i'm sorry second part uh what my situation is and how this whole thing has affected me. So, I was well into my second trimester uh, when the emergency situation was announced. I had had all my ultrasounds and I think I had to go and do the uh, glucose tolerance test, but they were still doing it while I had to go and do it and it was fine. Uh, I had to wear a mask, like, a mask. Uh, for the first time when I went to see my doctor last month. So well over a month into the emergency situation. And I had thought that I wanted to do the uh, third trimester ultrasound just to see my baby. Uh, when she resembles a human being before, before she comes out. Um, but it wasn't that important to me because it's... You have to pay for it anyway. Um, but 
I was pretty shocked and struck with the birding, birding partners thing. Uh, maybe very emotional and sad for a long time. Every time I thought about it or talked about it, I started crying because <laughs> it's like I'm I'm a very very sensitive person and kind of like really I'm independent, but I want to lean on my partner on some things and. This baby is not just my baby, it's our baby and I want him to be there with me. I want him to hold my hand and stroke my back and tell me that it's gonna be fine, that I, I can do it. I know I can do it, but the fact that like, I can do it for us, like I can give birth to our child. Uh, and like have this collective experience is very important to me. Now, <laughs> um, I have come to terms with the fact that I might have to go and do it alone and maybe I will do it alone anyways. Uh, without discussing too much, my boyfriend doesn't think he wants or needs to be there anyways but that's a different thing but besides everything like clinical and like hospital related pregnancy for me is a pretty social thing like for, yeah one woman is pregnant it's a new family member like of course grandmas grandpas and aunts and uncles want to be part of that now with the emergency situation um, we were advised not to visit our elderly relatives um, and my grandma was not very elderly she's 73 I think or 74 or something like that uh, I actually went I've, I've gone and and spent time with her quite a lot because she's still working and meets more people in a day than I <laughs> I am so um, but it's a very social thing and there's been a lot of discussion about people sitting at home quarantining or just you know staying at home because they can't go anywhere uh, getting depressed and lonely and drinking a lot well pregnant women can't drink or shouldn't drink anyways and when you can't see your friends or family it gets very lonely like I don't want to be lonely in my pregnancy yes I understand that this is a time to get to know my body and really create this connection with my baby and and spend time with my boyfriend while we're still together like just the two of us but I always imagine pregnancy be, to be this like really it's like social thing like friends coming over and just seeing me grow and and just to have this collective experience and I haven't seen my friends in a while and I really do miss them pregnant women shouldn't ever be depressed or feel down I know it's easy to say no one should ever be depressed or feeling down but what I mean is I found out recently that the baby kind of empathizes or feels everything the mother is feeling so when the mother is happy the baby is also more active and she gets these like hor happy hormones and more oxygen and feels good but when the mother is stressed or sad or depressed the baby uh, is also like mimicking the depression and of course when you're stressed the oxygen level your oxygen levels are a bit lower your body is more tensed up so the baby won't get as much much oxygen as they might need so it's not only just mental, it's very much a physical thing in pregnancy 
and for the baby and I want the best for my daughter. <laughs> I want the best for her when she's inside of me. And being alone is not the best. So yeah, that was a very rambly <laughs> and emotional video. I just still want to say it again. This whole information I have is very current, like as as far as I know. It's May 7th that I'm filming this. Uh, things might be better in a few days, in a few weeks, we'll see. I might give you an update or two in the comments if there, if there is anything that, that there, if there are any like positive updates. And I know this has been a really rambly video. I still hope you like, can't say enjoyed it, but got some new information from it. Just, let's just be there for the people we love. And I hope that everything goes well. Um, and I hope that everything goes well with you guys and pregnant women and women giving birth. And I really hope everything goes well with me and my baby. So that was, that was this video. A very rambly, serious, <laughs> emotional. And to de-stress myself, I'm gonna go and have a lovely walk now. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments box. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Um, and I hope you have a really lovely day. And I'll see you when I see you. Bye.